Hey guys, Alton here. I want to welcome you to my YouTube channel and also welcome you back to my series where we're learning about Linux fundamentals for ethical hacking, specifically Kali Linux, where I'm teaching back to you guys what I'm learning as I'm learning ethical hacking. So this video is going to be video number five of our series. And within this video, we're going to focus in on software management, specifically two different commands. We're going to focus in on apt-get and apt cache. So with apt-get, we can do all sorts of cool things. We can update our list of repositories. We can update our actual software packages. We can actually update our entire distribution of Linux if we wanted to. So we're going to explore that. And then we're going to explore apt-cache as well. And apt-cache will allow us to search for different packages. Specifically, I'm going to demonstrate taking a look at and searching for FileZilla, which is a very popular GUI FTP software package. And we'll install it with the apt-get as well. And then we'll also remove it with that as well. So let's go ahead, let's get started, and let's switch on over to my computer screen. All right, so let's go ahead and let's get started. So I'm already logged into my Kali Linux machine and I'm logged in with my root account so we don't have to issue the sudo command all the time. So in this video, we're gonna focus on using some specific commands, specifically the apt-get and the apt-cache command. And this is gonna allow us to add or remove or update Kali and specific software packages. So let's start at the top. Now you're gonna notice up here at the very top there is apt-get versus apt. apt is a newer version of the command. You may see people use apt instead of apt-get, but apt-get seems to work just fine. And from what I've been learning, a lot of people still use apt-get. So that's what we're gonna do. So the first thing that we wanna do is we want to run the apt-get update command on our system. And what this does is that it updates our Kali's list of available packages that we can use and their versions, but it doesn't actually update or install any of them. It's just think of it as a yellow book that has a listing of all the different services available to us if we were looking for something. Well, let's say that we had a yellow book from 10 years ago and we had one that we just received today. Well, we want to use the latest one because the older one is going to be outdated. So when we run this command, and let me go ahead and let me increase the font size on this just a little bit. And we'll go to 13 point. So let's go ahead and run the apt get update and hit enter. And this is going to take some time to run. And what this is going to do, it's going to go out to Kali and all sorts of other mirrors, other repositories, such as you notice in here from berkeley.edu. So you see Berkeley, it's going to go ahead and pull down the latest listing of those packages. Now, typically this would only take about a few minutes, but if your virtual machine is on the slower side, it may take a little longer, but you'll notice mine only took probably about 45 seconds. So now what I've done is I've updated my list of available packages. And so as we go through these, let's go ahead and mark them off as being completed. So we went through that. Now, what if we want to actually update our Kali machine? Well, we could run either the apt-get update or the apt-get dist-update. Sorry, upgrade, not update. These are both upgrade commands. And there is a difference between the two. I'm not a Linux administrator, but based on the research that I've done and what I've seen is that with the apt-get upgrade, what it does, it's going to install newer versions of packages that you have, but it doesn't always remove. And in fact, I don't think it removes any of the installed packages that you no longer meet, need. But with the apt-get dist upgrade, People say that it's more of an intelligent version of upgrading your distribution, your Kali Linux operating system. It's going to remove, in addition to upgrading to newer versions of packages, it's also going to remove installed packages that you no longer need. Now, on certain forums, I've seen people say that this could cause some issues versus this one. Um, but other people say this is a more intelligent one. So what we could do is we could run these upgrades, 
but we really don't need to. But if you do, and I'm not actually going to run it because it's going to take some time, could take five minutes, 10 minutes, um, and I just don't have the time to actually run through that, but you could run one or the other. But if you do, I recommend taking a snapshot before you do. So that's the apt get upgrade and the apt get dist upgrade. Now let's talk about actually updating software and or, well actually let's talk about adding software and removing software because this up here, all of this up here deals with updating your software and the distribution because when we run the upgrade command or the dist upgrade, it's actually going to upgrade your software packages as well. Now what if we wanted to install something? And a very good example would be, so a lot of us that have dealt with web development, we've used some sort of FTP client and a very common free one that a lot of us use is FileZilla. And I'm actually go ahead and I'll pull that up in, in Firefox. So let's go ahead and open up Firefox. And once it loads, we'll just do a search for FileZilla. So FileZilla is a very highly used free GUI interface, or let's say graphical interface FTP client. And we can download it here, but let's do it through the command line instead by using these commands. So let's go back to our shell and let's go ahead and clear the screen and let's search for it. So there is a specific search command. It's the apt cache command. You can search for a package and it's a very basic rudimentary keyword search. And then once you find something in here, you can do an apt cache show to show the details of that software package. So we'll do apt cache and let's search for FileZilla and let's see if it comes up. And there you go. So what I did is I wanted to look for FileZilla and if I actually ran this before I updated my list of packages that are available, this actually wouldn't come up, it wouldn't find it. But you'll notice here we go, FileZilla, full featured graphical FTP, secure FTP or FTP secure, so that's what the S means here, client. Now let's do another search. Let's just do the upt command and let's just do a search for FTP instead. And what you're gonna notice is that the results are much longer. So like I said, it's just a keyword search and there's lots of different things in here with FTP within it. So let's clear this out. And now let's actually take a look at what is within FileZilla or the details of it to see if we actually want to install it. So apt cache and then we'll do show and then we'll do FileZilla. And now this tells us some details about it. So the name of the package is FileZilla, the current version number, the install size, the maintainer, details and all sorts of other things in regards to it. So those are those two commands. So we have the apt cache search and we have the apt cache show. Now what if we wanted to actually install FileZilla? Let's go ahead and let's install it. We would use the apt get command. So there's not only the apt get update, the apt get upgrade, and the apt get dist dash upgrade. There are several other apt get commands. There is an install command to install a package. There's a remove command to remove a package. And there's a purge command to purge a package, meaning to literally remove it and any sort of configuration files associated with it to get it off of our system. So let's run the command apt get and let's actually before we do that, let's clear this out so it's at the top of the screen. So let's clear the screen and we'll do apt get and we'll say install file Zilla. And it's gonna go ahead and read it. It's gonna ask us down here, do we want to continue? Do we actually wanna install it? We're gonna hit Y on our keyboard, hit enter. And now it's gonna go ahead and it's gonna do the installation. So let it do the installation. 
And then once it's done, what we can do is we can go up to our menu, search for it, and we can actually open it up. So let's go ahead and let it continue to run. Should be done fairly soon. Shouldn't take too long for FileZilla. And we'll let it continue to run. And then once it's installed, we'll take a look at it up here. We'll open it up. And then what we'll do is we will remove it. Now we can either do the app to get remove or the app to get purge. Either one is up to you, whichever one you want to do. Let's go up to our menu and let's search for FileZilla. And here it is. Let's go ahead and open it up. And here's FileZilla our graphical FTP client. Very cool, very simple, very easy. So let's close it out. Now let's say that we don't want FileZilla anymore. Well, we could do a very basic command, right? We could do either app get remove or app to get purge. Either one will work just fine. We'll just do the app to get remove. And we'll just type in the name of the package that we want to remove, which is FileZilla, hit enter. And of course, I did apt remove, not apt get remove, so it didn't work. Let's go ahead and clear anyways. apt get remove filezilla. And it's going to ask us to confirm, do we really want to remove this package? We're gonna say yes, and we're gonna remove it. Now, if we go back up to here, we search for filezilla. You're gonna notice it's no longer up here, so filezilla successfully removed. Now, of course, because we did this, if there were any configuration files, it would leave them in place. If we wanted to remove all the configuration files, then we would do the app to get purge. So they both do the same thing. This one just also removes your configuration files associated with that as well. So that's going to conclude this video for our series. And Hopefully I showed you just some basic things to help you get up and running with either adding software or removing software, updating your list of available packages for your distribution for Kali Linux for our Debian distribution of, of Linux here, showing you how you can run the upgrade command as well, showing you how you can run the apt get distribution upgrade command as well, searching for software packages with the apt catch search, doing the show command to look at the details of something that you found with the search, installing it with the apt get install, removing it with the apt get remove. And let me go ahead and get that back there and also let you know that you can use the purge command as well. Now, because I just want to quickly demonstrate the upgrade command, it's gonna take some time, I'm gonna go ahead and run it. It's gonna ask us to confirm, say yes. And this is gonna take some time. So this is why I didn't wanna run this at the beginning of the video. But if you did wanna run this, you could run it just to make you aware. It's gonna take several minutes to complete. So just let it run. And you're gonna notice here, down at the bottom, it's telling me that it's gonna take 53 minutes. Now it says seven minutes. So watch this. And it's not going to be accurate. This is going to jump all over the place based upon how fast it's downloading and updating. So like I said, this is going to take some time. I'm going to end the video now. Just let it run. If you do do this, make sure you take a snapshot before you do it and afterwards take another snapshot so you have it. Just best practices of having snapshots in place for your virtual machine. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and I look forward to seeing you guys at the next video. Take care. Well, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you guys at future videos. Take care.